How you doing guys? This is Ryan. Welcome back to the channel. You're probably wondering why you clicked on this video. Why did you click on this video? <laughs> So yeah, the title of this video is How to Make Money from Dead People. And I've never personally invested in this, but I actually was approached by it and I found it to be somewhat interesting, so I wanted to cover it on this channel. Now guys, no, none of this is financial advice. This is just me sharing my opinion and my experiences and explaining things that I've learned to the best of my ability with my own research and due diligence. So before investing any of your own money, please make sure to do your own due diligence and be responsible for your own risk. So with that said, what am I talking about? Now they always say there's two guarantees in life. There's death and taxes. Can you invest in death? When you first hear this, it sounds strange. You may feel like you're the Grim Reaper, but around this country every day, there are thousands of life insurance policies sold to people every single day. And there are several different kinds of life policies. The three most popular would probably be term, which term you pay a very small amount of money for a very high death benefit, and it usually expires after 20 or so years. Um, but all that money you spend towards it, you don't get any of it back. And then they have whole life policy, which you put in more money and at the end, you will get all the cash value back that you put in, not adjusted for inflation, but you will receive every dollar that you put back in. And then there's also something called universal life, where you put in money and it has a much higher carrying cost, but you get a rate of return on top of your money after buying the life policy as well. And people buy life insurance really to take care of things when they're gone, if they have a wife, a family, a business, any kind of asset that would require more money with them not being there, life insurance is a great tool to have. Now, I don't want to go into which kind of life policies are good or bad policies, but in this example, there are a lot of people that have very expensive life insurance policies that they may not be able to afford anymore, or they may not have anyone to leave it to. For example, women typically outlive men, and a male will carry life insurance on them, but there are scenarios where the women did not outlive the male, maybe they did not have kids, and he just doesn't have anyone to give this to. So this policy has a death benefit that no one may be able to benefit from. And I was actually told that only 2%, 2% of life insurance policies actually end up paying out a death benefit. So the insurance companies make lots and lots of money off this. So there are thousands of Americans with life insurance policies that may be actually looking to get rid of them. And there's really two reasons I can think of or that I've come across why people want to get rid of their life insurance policies. One is it's too expensive to carry and they're at risk on lapsing on their life insurance policy. And if they were to lapse on their life insurance policy, it would just go away and all that money they have spent towards it would be to no effect and there would be no death benefit. The other scenario where people may not need their life insurance is if they don't have anyone to leave it to. Now in these two scenarios, these people may actually want to get rid of their life insurance policy. And they can actually go to the market and sell it. And the way to actually profit from dead people is what's called a life settlement. There are people that will help these people with their life insurance policies find investors to sell it to so they can get money for it and enjoy it in their life. Now they can actually get more money for the policy the greater at risk they are to death. Which is crazy. I know, guys, I'm, I'm saying all this and talking about death. It sounds crazy, so bear with me. This is an investment. It, it's worth noting. So there's a lot of data, actually, on death. So, for example, the United States government is really interested to know how long the population is living in order to fund things like Medicare and Social Security and any other government program that relies on it. They need to have good data on the amount of taxpayers and the amount of people that are receiving tax benefits. So there's actually something called actuaries that will run data on people's lives to see how long they will live. And these life settlement companies use these actuaries to price in the value of their life insurance policy. So they actually run tests and data to see how long this person is actually going to live and that makes their policy more valuable. 
Now people can give away their policy, they can sell it for $10, they can sell it for $10,000, they can sell it for $100,000. And it's really just like any investment, you have to take the data you have and you have to invest with a goal of intended return on investment. So for example, I looked at a policy, the death benefit was $500,000, the gentleman suggested I bid $25,000, and the actuary said this person had three years to live. But the carrying cost on the policy was about $8,000 a year. So, let's do some quick math there. If I were to give $25,000 for the policy, I would then take over an $8,000 a year annual carrying cost, which would be another $24,000, bringing my total investment to $49,000. And if the actuary was correct, the total return would be $500,000. So I could turn about $50,000 into $500,000 in just three years. I don't have my calculator in front of me, guys. I'm doing this all off of everything I've learned, but that's an insane amount of return. Now, there are risks associated with this. The person could live longer. And another concern I really had was just the strength of the contract to make sure that I am actually the full owner of the policy and from the way it was explained to me, the process of getting the policy is actually tougher than getting a mortgage. The closing process is actually longer and more stringent, more signatures from what I've been told. And also the person could live much longer, which would be great, great for them, you know? So it's kind of like the odd part of the investment is you're expecting someone not to live. And uh, for me, mentally, I want people to live as long as possible. So another way to plan this investment would be you can actually, after owning the policy for a year and a day, you can sell them. And that's what the gentleman who owns the business actually prefers to do because he has a fiduciary obligation to only make a set amount off the initial sale by selling someone's life insurance policy to an investor. But if he can package them up and sell them to a bigger institution, for example, he said Berkshire Hathaway was a big client, a number of other banks, he said it's a very institutional type investment. So what he prefers to do is to have you buy the policy for $25,000 he would probably like to sell it at let's say 80 to $100,000 and he would probably like to get a much bigger percentage return the second time around. So that's a way you could invest in this type of policy without having to root for someone to die. So guys, a big thing that hit me during this whole process was that insurance companies only pay out 2% of life policies. So is this an opportunity to get the insurance companies and provide people who want to get rid of their policies an option? Or is this like being the Grim Reaper type investing? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I haven't invested in it yet, like I said at the beginning, but I'm wrapping my head around it. I want to talk to more people and I want to hear more feedback on whether you guys think this is a good investment, if there's risk associated with it, is it immoral? Let me know what you think in the comment section. So again, this is called a life settlement. There's actually another type of settlement called a viatical settlement and that is if someone actually has a terminal illness, they can sell it. But those things are usually about 12 months or less and the gentleman said he would rather see those people keep the policy because it would be much easier to hold on to and they should probably really have the return there. Some of these life insurance insurance policies actually require people to carry $50,000 a year to carry a multi-million dollar policy. And the earlier in the career they could afford that, now that they're older with fixed costs and higher medical costs, they need to get rid of it or else it's going to lapse. So guys, I appreciate you hearing me out. So again, I expect a lot of interesting feedback in the comments section below. And as always guys, I always appreciate all of the insight. If you guys found this information to be useful, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so YouTube notifies you every time I upload a video. I upload videos every single week here on YouTube. And you can also follow me on Instagram. I'll put my handle here. I post there pretty much daily. And guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.